What's up, Z-Pack? It's your boy, Z-Dog MD. Hey, quick bit of housekeeping. Become a supporter on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash become supporter forward slash Z-Dog MD, and you can get CME and CEU credits for select episodes. Moving forward, thanks for being a fan of the show. Please subscribe and... Uh, uh, leave a review on iTunes for the podcast version of this. If you're uh, listening on the podcast, you can check out the video version at zdogmd.com with all the links included in the description. All right, today we have a really special guest. His name is Nathan Jones, and he is the founder of a company called Clear, spelled X-L-E-A-R. Now, Nate Dog, as I like to call him, approached me a while back and said, hey, you know, there's this data that we have that we might be able to help people with chronic rhinosinusitis, which is the condition that affects a lot of people in the US. It's a nasal spray that contains xylitol. And my first thought was, wait, 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 isn't that a non-absorbable sugar that they put in gums and things like that? Why would you put it in your nose? And I was very skeptical and he said, look, I wanna sponsor an episode because I wanna tell people about this thing so that they can try it and see if it works for them. And he showed me some data and at first I was again like, Hey, I ain't Dr. Oz, we don't do that. The more I learned about it, the more I thought, you know what, let's talk about it with a skeptical eye and let's offer the ZPAC a coupon for 30% off. If you go to clear.com and you put in the code Z-D-O-G-G-M-D, you can get 30% off and try it. And the main reason that I wanted to do this is Logan said, look, man, I actually been using this for months and it's helped a lot, whether it's a placebo effect or whatever it is, he sort of swears by it. So I said, all right, let's give it a shot. Uh, Nate is a passionate guy. Um, he's our neighbor in Utah, he's a pilot, he's a world traveler, and he has this product that's actually number one on Amazon, which already makes me like, wait, it must be a scam then. But the more I learned about it, the more I thought, wait a minute, if we can at least do a trial within us, z -Pack, because the downside is very low, it might be really worth doing, especially if we get a little coupon. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. I want I want to hear feedback um, in the comments. And if you're a podcast listener, you can email me, zubin at turntablehealth.com, and let me know what you think about stuff like this. So here, my friends, we're going to get right into it. Nate Jones, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. So it's interesting because, you know, the way we connected, I was, it was one of those deals where I was like, okay, I have no idea what this guy's about. He's got a product that he says helps with chronic rhinosinusitis. It's a non-absorbed sugar alcohol, which I knew about xylitol because it's in a lot of gums and toothpaste and it has been shown to decrease uh, dental cavities and things like that. But you were talking about spraying it in your nose. And my first thought was, okay, it's a slippery slope uh, where suddenly I'm Dr. Oz, even just talking to you, because it was so weird, right? It's like, wait, what? This sounds totally like pseudoscience. Then we started talking more, and you told me about your dad, and you told me about the um, sort of um, evidence around why this might help, and I got really compelled, and I said, you know what, let's, let's talk about uh, this more, because I think this might be able to help a lot of people if it does work. So tell me, how, how did you even get involved in this space? I got involved in it because my father is a physician, and I always do what the doctor tells me to do. <laughs> Finally, <No>. a compliant <laughs> patient. No, I got into it because my father is a physician, and he's the one that started using it in a nasal spray. Mm. Uh, at the time, I was working on oil rigs. I used to do underwater welding out on oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico. I went up, and I was visiting my father in his practice in West Texas. And in sitting in his office, one of his nurses came in and said, you know, something along the lines of, hey, we have someone out here who's looking for some of that jungle juice that you mix up for the kids. And so he went off, came back a couple minutes later, and I said, well, what is it you're doing this time? And, and he said, well, you know, it's this, and he, so he described this whole thing to me, this, you know, xylitol spraying it in their nose. He invented it. He developed it for kids who were getting chronic ear infections. And he goes back to, and I said, well, where did you come up with this idea from? Why are you spraying a sugar in your nose? And he said, well, you know, all these dental research studies that have been done for 40 years, because they've known for 40 plus years that xylitol prevents tooth decay. They've, they've known it. It's, it's kind of a given. If your dentist isn't talking to you about xylitol, get a better dentist. Well, so, so let me ask you a question. So why would xylitol, which is a non-absorbed sugar alcohol, so it tastes sweet, but it isn't absorbed, so it doesn't generate calories, why would that prevent uh, dental cavities? Because it's a five-carbon sugar, and the, and the sugars that we typically use, sucrose, glucose, fructose, and even to a lesser extent in sugar-free products, sorbitol, mannitol, maltitol, those are all six-carbon sugars. 
the strep mutans, the bacteria in your mouth, they eat those sugars. They break down sucrose, glucose, fructose. They make acid. The acid's a byproduct of that, and that's what causes cavities. It dissolves the enamel. Mm. And they, can, they do live off, strep mutans does live on uh, sorbitol, mannitol, and maltitol. They don't create as much acid, so those are considered non-cariogenic. They don't cause cavities. They yeah. don't cause cavities. But they're, you're still feeding the bacteria. Right. They're living, they're thriving, so the next time you have a donut, the next time you have a piece of bread or anything with sugar, they're ready, in, to, go. They're ready to go making that acid again. The xylitol is a five-carbon sugar. They try to metabolize it. They can't eat it, but they'll eat it, and they keep eating it, or they'll kick it back out, and they'll eat it again, kick it back out. And the phosphorylization of that, kicking it out of the cell, takes an incredible amount of energy because bacteria aren't made to kick stuff out. Mm. They're made to pull it in. Um, and so they get weak. But, but the studies... When they were doing the dental research studies, what they found is that the kids were using the xylitol products. Not only were they not getting cavities, there was also a 42% reduction in ear infections. And that's what my dad read. Ah, so this was the jungle juice that he was making this in This was the Texas. jungle juice. And what, came, what was, where it came from is he went on PubMed. And if you remember, PubMed came online in 98. Mm. He went on PubMed and he queried preventing ear infections. And what came up was all of these dental research studies. Huh. And, he, you know, he has kids that are too young to chew gum, so he buys some xylitol, puts it into the ocean, starts washing out their nose. And, you know, in his practice, and it was only, a, you know, in his practice and his people, but they had a, a 92% reduction in ear infections. Wow. So this was the early data that he was seeing. The very early data. Your dad's story is interesting, too, because he's a family doc. He pit, like pitched a tent in front of med school. <laughs> to get in, right? I don't know if he pitched a tent, but he <laughs> he went and stayed on the uh, camped outside the door until they let him in. <laughs> wow, was was that his first career? Was medicine, or did he? Do no, he like his first career he was working for AT and T. Wow. So, and so it was the second. Was, I can't remember which one of my siblings it was, but it was the second or third maybe that he went into the delivery room and said, "You know, this is pretty cool. I want to become a doctor." And at this point, he was thirty something years old. Wow. And, you know, in the 70s, it was late 60s, it was almost unheard of to go to medical school when you were in your 30s. So he had a hard time getting in. And he got in and then uh, sort of dedicated, he, he was working mostly in West Texas? No, he, he did his, his residency in Oklahoma City. Got um, it. And then he went up to Western Idaho. He, he just wanted to be a small town doctor. Right. Went up to a small town in, in uh, Western Idaho called Cam uh, Council. And that's where I lived from when I was... I, he did his residency. I was one year old in Oklahoma, and then he went up to Council, Idaho, and had a little clinic up there, and then he went over to St. Anthony, Idaho, and we lived there for about eight years. That's where I spent my formative years, um, and we lived there until I was 13, 14. These, these are tiny towns, and this is a breed of doctor that is dying away now, you know, big mega mergers, employed yeah. physicians, that kind of thing. So it's interesting. So, so he kind of Stumbles on this, does the PubMed search, sees the connection between xylitol, dental caries, and reduction in ear infections. Then what happened? Um, well, he obviously wanted to find out what the method of action was, and then he went and found, you know, in, in further research, he found there was a study that was done by Amadu Uhari and Taro Conti Okari, and what they found is that the xylitol binds up on the, on the lectins on the outside of the cells of the mm -hmm. bacteria and makes them so they can't adhere to the tissue, and they showed that a 5% reduction, or a 5% solution of xylitol reduced the ability of the strep pneumo, which is obviously one of the big problems up in your nose, but it re reduced that bacteria by about 72%, its ability to adhere. And I've looked at some of these studies, uh, and it's interesting, and there's a Chinese study too that's quite interesting, but I think what, what we're describing is this non-absorbed five carbon sugar alcohol actually interferes with bacterial adhesion. And it's, it's that bacterial biofilm and adhesion that can trigger ear infections, chronic rhinosinusitis, and other things in theory. So the idea that you could interfere with that uh, is compelling in terms of, well, now do we see an actual outcome in terms of improvement in infections in humans? And so it's one thing to show it in a dish, right? But it's another thing to actually see it happen in humans. So where did that tipping point happen? Or did it happen? Um, I don't know that I would say that it's happened yet, because what I, what I foresee is that you know, using a xylitol nasal spray to to wash your nose will become as commonplace as people brushing their teeth. The nasal spray is really, it's a hygiene tool. It's not used to, to prevent, it's not used to to um, cure you, I guess. It's it, any more than washing your hands is there to prevent you or cure you from getting sick. So, okay, let's back up for a second, because uh, I think this is where we should talk a little bit about 
chronic rhinosinusitis. It's a fancy way of saying your mucous membranes in your nose and your perinasal sinuses, sinuses are inflamed. And it in the chronic variant, you're talking about a three month period where you're having this. It's not getting better. You've tried some things. And the typical management for this is a pastiche of, is it antibiotics? Is it nasal steroids? Is it oral steroids? Is it nasal rinses and irrigation? Yeah, things like that. And still people have a lot of trouble and the prevalence in the community is roughly 15% of Americans suffer some degree of this. So this is a real problem. Even setting aside ear infections and things like that, we're just talking about rhinosinusitis. There's allergic causes, there's infectious causes, there are even fungal causes of this. So the idea then that you're proposing is, okay, you have a xylitol-based nasal spray. Now, why, why would this be better than lavaging your nose with a neti pot or with saline, which a lot of the ENTs will tell you to do? Um, because using a xylitol, I mean, the, the, the analogy and the, and the comparison that I use is when you wash your hands, do you use soap or do you just rinse them with water? Because mm. if you're using a saline, in essence, what you're doing is you're rinsing them. Mm. And what you're doing if you use xylitol is you're actually using a, it's almost a surfactant. You're making it so the bacteria, the harmful bacteria, aren't going to be able to adhere. You're washing it rather than just rinsing. Um, and when you're using a nasal lavage, a, a douche, I guess, what you want to call it. <laughs> it's a nose douche. A uh, nose douche. Yeah. Um, you know, what you're doing is you're, you're cleaning out that entire protective layer of snot. And you need that snot. That snot is there to protect the underlying tissue. And if you wash it out, you're going to expose all that underlying tissue to bacteria, to viruses, to the molds, to all of this stuff. Okay, let me back up for a second. So the, per, the layer of mucus there that you have in your nose actually has components of what they call innate immunity. So there are immunogenic compounds in the in the mucus that f prevent bacterial adhesion, prevent bacterial growth, those kind of things. So they're part of your immune system. So you're saying nasal lavage, which is one of the mainstays of um, a managing chronic rhinosinusitis, may actually be harmful in theory. Um, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to say that. But I know doctors that, that totally say that. I mean, Dr. Nasuli, who, who he's, he's a great ENT out of, out of Washington, D.C. in Georgetown, um, he published a study back in 2009 where he had people that used the irrigation tools on a regular basis, and they stopped using them. Sixty percent of their symptoms went away. Hmm. And, and his analogy, he used the analogy of comparing it to a douche. Because when you when you use a douche, and vaginal douche, to, yeah. yeah, when you use a vaginal douche, doctors used to tell women to use them because they, you know, it had a short-term benefit. P doctors continue to tell people to do that in their nose. But what he pointed out is that you're cleaning out that entire protective layer of mucus, and that mucus layer is there to protect you. If you remove that, then you're remo removing all of the, uh, I'm not sure what they're called, I think they're called mucusins and something else. There's a few of them, yeah. That antibacterial, the, you know, the, the antibacterial properties and the, and the compounds that are in your airway surface liquid in your snot. Now, and this is a controversial stance, but there is some data that Nasuli had to kind of show this. The, the issue is then, is nasal sort of irrigation, neti pots, things like that. Because, because again, if you look it up today, you read about chronic rhinosinusitis, they'll say, well, that's one of the, uh, you know, therapies that can help with symptoms. But the question is, is the xylitol nasal spray, how often do you use it? Once in the morning, once at night. So just two sprays or one spray, each no each yeah. nostril once yeah. in the morning. So BID, and the idea then that you're not irrigating, you're maintaining the mucosal integrity, but you are introducing this compound xylitol that can do what in the nasal passage then? Well, there's, there's two ways that it works. The one is it reduces the ability of the bacteria to adhere to the tissue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that's one way that it works. The second way that it works is when, when you use a saline irrigation or saline solution and you put it up your nose, after about 30 minutes, what happens? Your nose dries out, mm -hmm. okay? The reason why is because the salt's actively transported across the mucosal membrane into the tissue, mm -hmm. and then the water's gonna follow it, mm -hmm. and that's gonna dry out your snot because it's pulling the water into the tissue. Osmotically, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And since the xylitol's not absorbable, it sits there in your snot, and slowly pulls that moisture out of the tissue. And that's why it reduces that. And, and the study that Nasuli presented down at the a American Academy of Allergy, I mean, in American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, um, but he presented a paper down there in 2015. And what he showed is that compared to a saline, 
because the xylitol is non-absorbable, it's going to slowly pull that moisture out. But it showed a 35% improvement in their peak volume, nasal flow, yeah. in three weeks. Well, so, yeah, and that, that gets me then to some of the data on this. And, and then we'll talk about some anecdotal data. Because, see, on this show, what we try to do is we dig into some of the evidence and we talk about uh, ideas that are a little bit off the grid. But at the same time, we always are suspicious and skeptical, right? So anybody, and remember, now you run a company that sells this stuff and you're offering our uh, viewers like, a 30% off coupon using the code ZDOGMD. So immediately my audience should be skeptical. They should say, well, hmm, just like I'm skeptical, right? Yeah. But this is the interesting data that I reviewed. Um, in, what 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 they saw then the way there's ways to measure this there's something called a snot 22 index which is fascinating it's like a series of parameters on like what's going on in your yeah. mucosa etc and the other thing is a nasal peak flow type measurement so you put on a, a meter and you're pulling your your it's kind of like a peak flow for asthma but through your nose yep they studied um, randomized control trial. This one was out of China, actually, but it was published in a non-predatory, legit journal, uh, which we'll link to in the show notes for this on the website. And what they found was in the uh, group randomized to the xylitol, and then there was a group randomized to nasal spray. The xylitol group had significant improvements in their nasal uh, peak flow and in their SNOT22 index. And that was a short trial, small group of people, total 30 patients, 15 in each group, randomized, prospective randomized, double-blinded control trial. So again, gold standard type trial, too small, very small, uh, but if it's repeatable and you do more studies, I think it's a really interesting, promising thing because what's the downside of the xylitol product? Nothing. Does it taste sweet in your nose? I tried it. I it couldn't does. taste it. Yeah. In, the back, in the back, you taste it. Yeah. yeah. And so here's the interesting piece. So you gave us some samples like months ago. Uh, and we were really skeptical, dude. Like, I'll be honest with you. Like when, when it, it just triggers every uh, uh, Dr. Oz PTSD. Like, oh my gosh, are we going to be, what are we, are we talking about green coffee extract for, you know, gout? Like what's going on? So. We tried this stuff. I used it, but I don't have the problem of chronic rhinosinusitis. And, and as you mentioned, well, it's kind of like washing your hands. You're preventing it. But it would take years for me to notice that I hadn't had a, an issue. Logan, however, gets multiple bouts of this to the point where he's on antibiotics a lot. He's always going to urgent care. He actually used uh, the nasal product and found it actually really helped a lot. So he's gotten sick a lot less. Now, again, anecdote. N of one, could be placebo, could be regression to the mean for Logan that he just normally would have gotten better. We have no idea, but he has had no side effects and the product is really cheap. He's been buying it on Amazon. So it's for that reason that I thought it'd be interesting for the crowd to hear about this. I talked to a couple of ear, nose and throat docs and they were like, oh, that's interesting. We've heard about this. It's not mainstream at all. So maybe it's time that we get the z pack to give it a try because it's low impact, right? It's, yeah. And you're gonna get 30% off and there's science behind it. In other words, it makes sense physiologically. The trials are a little small, but they do show benefit in a small early sense. And uh, um, if we can actually improve this problem, you're gonna have a lot of less missed days at work, a lot of other things. So not just for you, but for your patients that we're taking care of. So that that's what I would say is go give it a try. And then I wanna hear from them back and see, is it working for you? Yeah. You're one of the top products on Amazon, right, in this space? Um, I believe we are the top product in Amazon in nasal sprays. That's a big deal. I mean, to be, you know, the um, nasal spray king. It's not, it's not that, you know, it's not huge on Amazon. I mean, the vast majority of people still, when they want a nasal spray or a toothpaste or a gum, um, they're still going to go to their local grocery store. But, I mean, if they want to... Go but get it. I mean, you can get it at CVS and Rite Aid, and so all, it's, it's available all those places everywhere except Walgreens. Got it. <laughs> Suck it, Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a question though. So the the code, the coupon code ZDOGGMD, that works on your website, correct? Which is xlear dot com. Why did you call it Glear? Is that a <laughs> is that a British spelling like oesophagus? No, it comes from my dad, as he's the one that came up with the product. He named it, and he liked the name, and so because of him, we kept it. What, why, why the X? Because it stands for xylitol, it clears your nose. And, and the way you pronounce the X in Finnish, which is most, the vast majority of xylitol research, uh, it started in Finland, the vast majority of it has been done in Finland. Oh. Um, and, and the story behind that is because in World War II, because this little war that was going on, this little conflict, they weren't getting any sugar. Uh -huh. And the shipping's, you know, the ships were all getting sunk. And so they were actually making xylitol out of birch trees, which they have plenty of. 
Wow. And 20 years after the war, the dentists started noticing that the kids that grew up during the war didn't have cavities. And that's when Dr. Mackinnon, who's considered the godfather of xylitol research, he's a dentist, but they started looking at it and saying, what's going on here? And the very first study they did was done in 1968. And I think it was in three days, it reduced the plaque by 50%. Interesting. Well, could it just be that they weren't eating sugar, therefore they weren't getting cavities? Um, It could be, but they've done thousands of studies since then showing how xylitol affects the bacteria and, and the thing Strep is, is if you can if you can change and what they've shown i mean if you go look at like the the uh, what's the little country south of mexico belize you can go look at the belly sugar studies that they did and this was the university of michigan dental school and what they showed is that the kids used xylitol for two years and even eight years later they have they have 70 percent plus fewer cavities because you change the microbiome of bacteria in your mouth from bacteria that create acid to bacteria that don't create acid. Interesting, really interesting. Well, let me ask you a question. Okay, who's paying you, okay? Are you in the pocket of big xylitol? Because uh, I suspect there's a conspiracy here. To where, but speaking of which, there is no big xylitol, right? There is no big xylitol. Is it on patent? Is there anything? No, it's not on patent. Um, it, to me, I think, I mean, I, I don't want to, uh, I'm trying to think of how to say it politically correctly. No, we don't do that um, on this show. <laughs> but but you can't, we can't go out and put on our packaging, xylitol prevents tooth decay. Right. Because even though there's thousands of studies showing that it does, nobody has gone through the process of the FDA. And if someone went through the process to do that and make it a drug, then you don't have a patent, everybody else is gonna go through it. And so you're gonna go out and spend millions, mm. if not tens or 20 millions, to, to get that regulation done. Mm. And then everybody else is gonna go put xylitol in it and be able to make the same claims you are. Right, right, right. The only group that can, that can actually approach the FDA and say, we would like this to be classified and we'd like people to be able to put this on their package as long as it's 100% xylitol is the ADA. And, and the biggest contributors to the ADA are people that would stand to lose a lot of money if they put xylitol in their oh, products. Oh, like Big Colgate. Big Colgate, Big, Big PG, yeah. yeah. And those companies, they use sorbitol. They use a lot of sorbitol in their gum, Hershey's, Wrigley's. Um, but they put a lot of sorbitol in their gum. And their cost of their product would, would double, if not more, um, if they put xylitol into it. Hmm. The, and, and, and relating to that, you get your xylitol from what, corn husk? or Corn cobs. Get? Corn cobs. Yeah. So it's hella GMO, bro. Are you trying to sell me GMOs? Cause <laughs> no, no it, it's, it's the, the corn cobs. It all comes out of China. And they won't grow GMO food in China, so it's non-GMO. Oh, for what that's worth. Well, okay. And here, well, here's a question though. So relating to the xylitol, it's non-absorbed. So what happens? You're swallowing the stuff in the back of your throat. Are you going to get diarrhea from that? From an osmotic diarrhea? If you eat a lot of it, yeah, you can. But if you're using it like in toothpaste, mouthwash, you're rinsing. The the effects are really topical. Yeah. Um, You know, once it goes past there, I mean, there was a study that was just published. Some you talk about early. I mean, there's, there's two things that are really interesting that are actually really early. There's been one study done on each of them, but I, I think I forwarded you the one on oral cancer. Uh, I haven't seen that one. Oh. Yeah, I'll check it out. Um, but yeah, I'll, you hook it up, look, light, uh, put it on there, but what they found is that even replacing as little as 20% of your daily intake of glucose mm-hmm. stopped the progression of oral cancer with xylitol. That's interesting. It's I'd have to see that. Really it's probably early data, yeah. And the, but that is early. The other one is, they. I just saw it, but... They gave, you know, red ginseng. I mean, it was done in Korea, so it has to have red ginseng. In it. Of course. It's but good they stuff. gave a bunch of mice, of rats, a lethal dose of the flu vaccine or the flu virus. Uh huh. And I don't say lethal <laughs> dose of flu vaccine on this show. <laughs> no, they gave them a Nate lethal. Dog, I thought we had an understanding here. <laughs> no, no, they gave them a lethal dose of the flu virus. Right. And then they gave a bunch of them some some red ginseng, and twenty percent of them survived. They gave the xylitol, and sixty percent of them survived. But it was internally, it was eating it yeah and i don't understand i don't understand why that is let me speculate on some things so xylitol being non-absorbed is sitting in the gut and it's probably affecting gut microflora because what's happening is there it is uh, playing around with what's normally in in the gut flora and whether it's a beneficial or a harmful f- effect it, th- that depends on the product which is one of the speculations on why um artificial sweeteners like you know saccharin and nutrasweet and those guys aspartame uh, still cause some insulin resistance is by altering uh, gut flora. Has that ever been looked at with xylitol? There's, there's actually a couple of studies showing that it actually works as a good prebiotic. Interesting. There, aren't any, there is no research that I'm aware of, and I've read a lot of research, and I have a lot of doctors that do a lot of research on this stuff, 
Um, but we haven't found any where it shows there's a harmful effect on the gut micro- microbiome. Why do you think the mainstream allergies, allergists and ear, nose, and throat docs and pediatricians haven't picked this up yet? Because in order to get out there and really explain, um, we're not, a, I mean, I'm trying to think how to say it, but if to go out there and talk to them, we have to get out there and talk to them really one-on-one. We yeah. go to a lot of conventions, we talk to them, we send them literature about it, but we can't go out and advertise and say, this stuff will prevent ear infections or this stuff will prevent any of this. We can actually put that on our packaging in the EU and in Canada. Right. But you can't do that here. We can't do it here. And you're not making that claim on the show, right? No. Yeah. But there is this preliminary data that's interesting, and I think that's important. Yeah. On on this show, you could could actually make all the claims you wanted, but... Because, and I, because and I do because you're talking to people that are that are educated in the healing arts. Oh, I see. And yeah. so, so we, you can go out and make those claims, and it's up to the doctors to look at it. And, yeah, and use but we their wouldn't. Ability. We would never do that because uh, we're not Doctor Oz <laughs> yet. I'm working on it, Nate. Doug, you got to understand. Actually, the the you, you, can I tell the story? So the the, the way Nate kind of really. Uh, got under my skin because I was like, Nate, you know, I don't know enough about this. Let me look at the studies, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not good at, uh, at talking about products that, that don't have a butt ton of data, butt ton. And then I realized, well, there's very little downside and there is some data and, and it's interesting. And I think it might help people to try it. But what sold me, uh, was you said, well, and I said, well, so how come you haven't gone on Dr. Oz trying to, trying to show this stuff, Nate dog. And he goes, uh, cause Dr. Oz is a shill for big nasal douches. And I said, well, I've always thought he was a big nasal douche, but I didn't realize he was trying to sell, but he's, he's been pushing sort of nasal saline irrigation or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, I mean the number one brand out there, Dr. Oz and, uh, Oprah did yeah. it on air and that's really what put them on the map. What, 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 sorry. What, what put them on the map? Dr. Oz and Oprah. Well, yeah, what was the product you were saying there? Um, Neil Med. It's the one that most people use. But got it. That got put. That that really got its acceptance because Dr. Oz and Oprah did that live on air. Ah, well, so we're gonna get people to try this thing with a skeptical eye. So they're gonna go in with a negative placebo mindset. In other words, they're gonna go in going, "This is not gonna work," which is what Logan did. And he came out of it going, oh, this actually, <laughs> this seems to help me. And you're very passionate about it. And you won't, you won't be this passionate on the show because you, again, want to be balanced. But offline, I mean, you are passionate about this stuff and it comes through. And you're also passionate, I think, about your father and his legacy having come up with this and being really one of our, our sort of dinosaur docs, like this old breed of country doc that cared enough to go into medicine in his 30s, you know? And you leave this underwater Texas... Louisiana. I was in Louisiana. Oh, Louisiana. So tell me about that, man. I just, I'm curious. I well, lived in Louisiana, and I'd go out on the rigs and jack up boats and dive down and put pipelines together. What was that like? Was that a dangerous job? Everybody thinks it was dangerous, but it wasn't. It wasn't? There's there's so many safety checks. I mean, there was safety out the wazoo. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm more passionate about this because I think it's much better to uh, help people than just provide them with oil. <laughs> oh, let me ask you one last question. You're a really remarkable world traveler. Like you've been almost everywhere. How how did that? Tell me about that. How did that start? Ooh, that's a that's a whole five day conversation. <laughs> um, no, I actually really enjoy traveling. But what I the things that I really enjoy traveling, and you know, and I'll tell you why why I get more and more passion. Of, you know, to to go back into the clear part of it is. You know, I have a five-year-old and an eight-year-old child, and when I travel, I take them with me. Okay, I have flown everywhere, and I take them with me. You're a pilot, too. Yeah, Yeah, I'm a pilot. Yeah. Um, But I've taken them with me. I love that. Yeah, I'm a pilot. Yeah. (laughs) Also, uh, yeah, I've I've mined diamonds in Sierra Leone, and I've I've (laughs) underwater welds, and I work with this product that helps people. Um, But my kids, and I know this is completely anecdotal, but... It, it's anecdotal to to exponentially anecdotal because many people have the same thing. I mean, Shadow, you met, hey, he, you know, his family's kind of the same thing. But I'm able to take my kids. I mean, I took them to India for three weeks, and mm-hmm. none of us got sick. I take them to South Africa last November. We're completely fine. We've been to Turkey a number of times. We sell a lot of products, so I go over there a fair amount. They've been to Egypt a couple of times. They've been all over South America with me. They've been to Australia with me. And, and the fact that my kids, my eight-year-old has been sick once in her life. And my five-year-old, you could ask either one of them what it's like to be sick, and both of them will say, I don't know, because they've never been sick. My, mm. my eight-year-old was sick once when she was six months old. Mm. Well, that's good anecdotal data, exactly. Nate, but I like anecdotes occasionally. Um, but I actually, what I really love traveling for is I love to see 
the history that's out there. I mean, I went to India. Um, I've been all over Egypt. I've been all over Israel. I've been all over South America because what I really what I love is I love to examine. I know this sounds really corny, maybe, but man's relationship to God. Mm. And so I go to all these ancient sites because if you really want to understand um, whether there's a God or not or anything like this, you're really going to have to understand the history of that relationship and mm. how that plays into it. That's beautiful. So yeah, I, I love it. That's why my kids have been to Egypt and all over. Wow. That's why I play video games to get closer to God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quick question. I know. Uh, I mean, and, and you know, again, and it, you've told me some stories offline, and I just, I mean, it's really exciting stuff in your travels and stuff, and you're a pretty remarkable dude. I'm really glad to have you on the show. Last question, though. When's the rectal formulation coming out? So I want this by enema because, you know, I got I get the cheese farts sometimes, and if this prevented that. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll bet you you could probably just take a bottle and pour it in your enema bottle. <laughs> This is this is off 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 label yeah. use of xylitol. Um, no, you you could you could do it. I mean, if you you can just go buy some xylitol and mix it yourself. You know what, uh, Logan? Take some notes because after this, we're going to uh, anywhere but Walgreens, and we're gonna get, <laughs> we're gonna get us a xylitol in them. We're doing it. We're taking it as a team for the team. <laughs> Nathan Jones, it's really been a pleasure, man. Any parting words? No, give it a shot and, uh, you know, um, use it like the label says, once in the morning, once at night. If you, have, if you already have issues like chronic sinus infections, chronic ear infections, what we actually recommend is use it three or four times a day because what you're doing is you're cleaning it all out. When my dad originally started using it, he had parents use it on the babies every time they changed their diaper. Mm. The mucociliary clearance cycle is roughly four hours. Yeah. Um, so if you use it every four hours, you're going to keep it there. You're going to keep this not flowing, and you're going to keep pressure on the bacteria, on the microbiome, and, and the biofilm that's up there. Okay, a question and a comment. The comment first is, in one of the Chinese studies I reviewed, they found that nitric oxide production was increased in the presence of xylitol relative to saline rinses. And nitric oxide in the nasal passages is responsible for ciliary motility. So you're actually helping your natural immune system in theory, uh, or in in sort of these particular studies. So they're looking yeah. at mRNA from uh, NO, NO and so on and so forth. But the question I have is that I forgot to ask you is children. So what's the age cutoff for this thing? My dad invented it for infants. So Is, is it we, safe for kids? Yeah, completely safe. Okay. And how do you use it in little kids? Are you just squirting just it in their nose? Spraying it with a, with a mist. Okay. Do they enjoy it or is it gross? My kids have been using it. If, they ever, if they're ever stuffed up, I mean, even when they were as young as two, they would come and ask me for it. Got it. Now, what happens if you're really sick already and you're all congested? Should you still use it? Um, I would use it every hour. Wow. Because what, really what you're trying to do is speed up that cleansing of the uh, of the mucus out of there. And do you have a irrigation version of it or is it just a nasal spray? We have an irrigation version, but we tell people to use that as infrequently as possible and and I mean any in my opinion, any responsible person um, if you have a sinus infection or a cold or a flu, they shouldn't really be using it because you're going to wash out that entire protective layer of snot. It takes about 4 hours for it to come back. All of the viruses and the bacteria and everything that's still up in there, now they have free access to your tissue. There's mm -hmm. nothing stopping them from getting into it. And let's just remember that none of this is medical advice, and you should talk to your doctor, particularly if you suffer from chronic rhinosinusitis, and you should definitely collaborate with them. But let's give this a shot. And ZPAC gets a 30% off coupon at uh, clear.com, X-L-E-A-R.com. Com, using the code ZDOGGMD and it's case insensitive. So however you want to capitalize it, I personally capitalize the Z, the D, and anything else I want to capitalize because I'm ZDOGMD. All that right. works. <laughs> that works. Nate Dog, thanks for coming on the show, brother, yeah. and thanks for this offer for the Z Pack, and thanks for teaching me about stuff. Well, thanks for having me on. And we Anytime. out. We out.